Okay guys, so if you're looking for budget in-ear monitors for your church worship team, check this out. I have here, inside these packages, 11 different models of highly reviewed budget in-ear monitor varieties. Now these range in price from $20 to upwards of $100, but today we're gonna be talking about the value you get for the cost and the sound quality, the build quality, and the fit. Which of these monitors live up to the hype and which do not? Check it out in this video. Okay guys, so if you're a worship musician, you probably are a little bit aware of all of the budget in-ear monitor options that are available on websites like Amazon today. If you search for in-ear monitors on Amazon, you're gonna be confronted with hundreds of pages of results, all with really similar brand names, really similar model names, and even worse, most of them with really, really good reviews. So today we're trying to help you cut through the noise. We picked 11 different models from a number of brands that generally actually appear to be well received by the worship music community. And we're gonna compare them all against each other. Okay, so I guess the only thing left to do is get into these packages and let's get reviewing some in-ears. Okay, so these are all now out of the packaging, ready to be unboxed. Let's start by talking about the ultra budget tier. These are under $20 to about $30. Uh, I do wanna talk about how I'm gonna be listening to and comparing each of these models together. I put together just a simple playlist on my iPhone. This is a 12 Pro and I am using the standard uh, dongle. Let's dive in here to the first model. This is the KZ-ES4. It's $18.99 right now on Amazon and it's rated 4.5 stars. The ES4 is a two driver in-ear that has one balanced armature and one dynamic driver. And it also features a detachable cable. So in the box, we have the two in-ears here. This is a very typical look for KZ headphones. And then underneath we have a user guide, safe use of headphones. Um, we've got several extra tips, different sizes, looks like smaller and larger. And then we have a cable. Okay, so cable seems pretty standard for KZ stuff. See how that feels in the ear. They're nice and light. I uh, feel like I'm able to get that in there pretty far, it stays pretty naturally. Cable has a little bit of, it's not a wire, it's just thicker uh, plastic, sort of rubbery plastic around the tip, but it does have a nice natural bend to it. So this is staying uh, really solid, feels pretty good. Okay, so KZ-ES4, top of the list, lowest price. I actually really enjoy listening to these songs with these in-ears in. Uh, they're relatively balanced. The bass is punchy, relatively punchy and present. There's a decent amount of separation from left to right and uh, instrument separation as well. The treble, I think, gets a little bit grainy with really bright, sustaining sounds. I feel like there's a little loss of clarity there from what I would like to see. Uh, but I think for the price point, it's pretty impressive. Sub bass is audible, but not powerful. Uh, fit, I really like. These are not heavy. I found them really comfortable. They were very easy to seat in my ear and they stayed there really well. I think these uh, would be general use in ears, whether that's for home or just uh, standby ones to have around uh, for the worship team. Overall, I think these are good. I'd give them a thumbs up. Okay, so now let's move on to the KZ ZSTs. Now these are $19.99, uh, also four and a half stars on Amazon. You've got a dynamic driver and a balanced armature driver in here. These are dual drivers. So the same exact packaging. Same, a uh, few different sizes of tips. I'm gonna imagine an identical cable and then your in-ears. Uh, so it's, it's a different cable than the ES4s. The length is the same. Okay, so now these are plugged in. Uh, let's see how they fit. And uh, I would say, yeah, very similarly. All right, so let me give these a listen and then we'll come back. Okay, so the old friends, old faithful, the ZSTs. Um, actually, again, I think an enjoyable listening experience. 
for one dollar more, a very different listening experience from the ES4. Sub bass definitely more impactful here than with the ES4s to my ear at least. Uh, and in general, the bass response, I felt a little bit more energy. The lower mids are really flat. Um, there's not a lot of emphasis here. Uh, the low end and the high end is really where uh, these seem to be tuned for. The mid range uh, it just sort of disappears in the mix a little bit in a full band context. So stuff like rhythm guitar parts um, just doesn't have the same energy. So for an in-ear monitor, it depends on what your goals are. If you want a completely accurate portrayal of the source material, whether that's live or something you're listening to in playback, these are not gonna give you that. But if you want something that's engaging, that's inspiring, maybe helps you get pumped up if you're performing, I think the ZSTs fit the bill now, just like they did when they first came out. I think that was uh, the initial thing is, wow, I can get an energetic in-ear monitor mix for 20 bucks. Okay, so we've got one more in the ultra budget uh, price point to talk about. These are the ZSN Pro X or Pro 10. So this one says large size, dual magnetic dynamic driver with high resolution balanced armature unit silver plated cable. Uh, these are $23.99. Okay, so inside same, same stuff here pretty much. We've got a few alternate tips, we've got our cable, and we've got our in-ears here, silicone buds. Okay, so in my hand, definitely heavier than the previous two because it does have this faceplate on it, uh, which I'm feels like metal of some sort to me. It's, it's plated gold, it looks really cool. It's crazy, each of these three dollars apart has had a distinctly different cable. So again, no memory wire, but a thicker sort of pre-shaped uh, area of plastic up top. Yeah, so, I mean, these are heavier in the hand, but I wouldn't say really in the ear, uh, at least initially. We'll see how that translates after I've been wearing them for a little while. Okay, so ZSNs. Uh, in terms of fit, very similar to the previous two. I would say uh, virtually identical to the ZSTs and how they fit in my ear and how far into my ear canal I'm able to get them. In terms of audio quality, these to me feel like the exact opposite of the ZSTs in terms of what's emphasized and what's not. The mid range and the high frequencies are super hyped up, super present here. So what that translated to is I could really clearly articulate uh, guitar parts and uh, sparser arrangements, there's lots of vocal presence and clarity, but the only downside here that I'm running into is in big moments of songs, uh, sometimes things felt like they got a little bit washed out, a little bit even close to distorted sounding. These I think would make more sense perhaps than the ZSTs for a guitarist or really anybody that needs that mid-range to be really present in their mix. So that is the ultra budget tier. All three I think are passable. I don't know if any of them uh, I would take on stage uh, without first having looked at some of these at least next tier up options. We're calling this the mid tier uh, of budget. This is from around $40 to $60. We have four models here. So let's dive in and check these all out. First up we have the M6 Pro from MEE. -E. Now these uh, are $39.99. They're rated four out of uh, four and a half out of five stars on Amazon. These feature a single 10 millimeter dynamic driver. So everything in the ultra budget tier had a dynamic driver and a balanced armature. This is just a 10 millimeter dynamic driver. So it comes with a really nice carrying case. Super, super big actually. Um, and then uh, it comes with extra, like lots of accessories, which here we go. These come embedded in this nice foam, uh, not a braided cable, just a big solid rubber coated cable with a little neck clip, which I really like having those. That's nice. Um, there is a memory wire here, which I really, really like. Comes with tips. Let's see what else it comes with real quick before we try them on. Comes with tons of tips. And then this is really cool. It comes with one set of comply uh, foam tips, which we'll talk about a little later in the video. We're not gonna be evaluating any of these with anything other than the tips that they come with out of the box, but I'm a huge fan of foam tips being the biggest single upgrade you can make to make your existing universal monitors sound better. This is a lot of stuff. It comes with a, a quarter to eighth adapter. 
it comes with a spare cable. So you get two cable styles here. One would be for the, the musician type. And then the other one here is, um, you know, the kind that has a little uh, button here to control your phone, uh, a mic built in. So take calls, whatever. Let's see how it fits here. These are so, so lightweight. Yeah, and because of that, it's really not hard to get them seated in your ear. Um, so far, the ES4s still, I feel like, go the deepest in. I think what it is is there's less of the body of the in-ear in contact with my ear itself. And that makes sense because these are way smaller uh, in terms of the body than any of the three KZ models that we've already tried out today. So I kind of miss that extra contact. That said, the memory wire is really nice. I, I love memory wire in the, the cable. Okay, so M6 Pro, I'm really uh, actually, I don't wanna say blown away, but I'm close to blown away by these. I really uh, am pleasantly surprised by them. The number one word I would describe the sound quality of these is uh, clarity. Um, these have a, a distinctness and, and a level of separation and clarity across all the instrumentation in the listening that I've done that uh, is clearly, to me, a step above all of the, the KZ models that we uh, talked about at that $20 price point. These felt closer to what I would say is reference level of just spitting out what is fed in. So if you are a keyboard player, somebody who's playing across the full range, maybe all different uh, types of instruments via samples and things like that, I think these would be a good fit for you because they're going to give you a balanced presentation, or at least a more balanced presentation across the whole frequency spectrum than those $20 KZ options. Uh, these would not make sense, I don't think, for a bass player. Maybe not as much sense for an electric guitarist. They'd be great, I think, for vocalists, uh, especially maybe those with smaller ears as well, because they are so small, so lightweight. Really, really pleasantly surprised with these. I liked them. All right, now we're right back to KZ with the ZS10 Pros. This model is the updated version of the original ZS10s, which have been around for several years now. These are five driver in-ears. You've got one dynamic driver and four balanced armature in each ear, thus the ZS10, because you end up with 10 drivers. We're back to KZ, so we're back to the same old in the box. You've got some extra tips. Looks like you get more extra tips here, one extra set compared to the $20 models we talked about. And then you've got the cable. This is uh, our fourth KZ model and our fourth distinct look and feel uh, for the cable, which is just hilarious to me. Again, no memory wire, but a sort of preformed plastic ring. This is what this guy looks like. Uh, small, definitely smaller than the ZS10s I've previously owned. And they've got this metal faceplate. I immediately notice as I touch it, a giant fingerprint streak on it. Uh, we're, we're clearly getting heavier as we go up the KZ model line, uh, but these don't feel that much heavier to me than the ZSNs did. I mean, if, if I had this in one ear and the KZ ZSN in the other, I don't think I'd be able to tell them apart just by how they feel. But again, we've got a lot more going on here in terms of the drivers. Okay, so the ZS10 Pros from KZ, I think are the first big jump in sound quality that we've run into so far. These sound much better than uh, both the M6 Pro, which we just talked about, and all three of those $20-ish KZ options. You can hear a big difference in the size and separation of the instrumentation. Uh, one of the things that uh, I've heard about the ZS10 Pros and that I personally agree with is that these are one of KZ's most balanced sets of in-ears. These are not incredibly powerful in the low end, in the sub bass. They're not super hyped up in the treble or in the upper mids. It feels like a relatively balanced image of what you're feeding into the in-ears is what you're gonna get out. So for a bassist or a drummer who wants lots of thump, who wants lots of punch in the low end, these might feel a little flat or boring to them. But I think these are really, really a good option for pretty much every other member of your band. If you're a vocalist, if you're a keyboard player or a guitarist, a definite level up of everything we've talked about so far. I would pick these over the M6. I would pick these over all the other KZs that we've talked about. This is interesting. We've got to talk about this a little bit um, because these are from a company called CCA. 
But if you do a little bit of digging online, you find out that it, it's actually a sister company to KZ. These are five drivers per ear. And again, we've got four balanced armature, two for the mids, two for the highs. And then we've got one dynamic driver doing all the low end stuff. So here's inside the box. So here's the ears. These feel identical to the ZS10s that we were just working with. Um, while the packaging is different, the contents are identical here to KZ. So we've got yet another iteration of the same cable. This one's clear, kind of silvery. Okay, it's a little longer than the others from KZ. Same as the ZS10 Pro, three extra sets of different sizes of buds. All right, so fit in the ear, I can definitely tell that these are bigger um, because they feel uh, more than any other set we've tried so far, like they're hanging from my ear canal. Um, they're, they're, they're sort of in there, but they're also sort of, I can feel a little bit of a pull of gravity. I, I wish I had a memory wire in the cable here. Okay, so these C10s were really interesting to me because I just had been listening to the ZS10 Pros from KZ. I know these are supposed to be similar, so I was really listening for differences and I actually went back and forth a couple of times here. I really like these. I think they sound really nice. I think they share a similar uh, sonic fingerprint to the ZS10 Pros in that they're, they're quite balanced. I will say these are a little bit looser. And what I mean by that is that in terms of the stereo image, everything seems a little bit further spread apart. It's not quite as tight and focused. And I think these have a little bit more power to them, not in terms of how loud they can be, but just in terms of uh, the, the EQ profile and how they impact the music. There's more low end energy here in the C10s than in the ZS10 Pros. I think these would be a, a great option for drummers or bass players who want a little bit of that extra oomph in the low end, or for keys players that play a lot of bass parts, synth bass. Um, these don't fit quite as comfortably for me as the ZS10 Pros because of that extra little bit of size. So if you're somebody with smaller ears, you're probably gonna wanna make sure you spend the time to find the right size of tip or maybe look into some foam tips to get a nice seal. Okay, now we've got one more here in this sort of mid-tier budget here. These are the T2G from a company called the Fragrant Zither. I'm really interested in these. These are $59. Uh, the crazy thing is it's one 12 millimeter dynamic driver in here. This is plastic, this little shell here. And then the face plate actually has a little bit of plastic on it, presumptively to keep fingerprints off of it, but mine shipped with somebody's fingerprint <laughs> on it, not mine. Okay, and then the cables tucked inside here. Now this is much more premium feeling. Uh, there's like, yeah, big differences. We've got a little protector on the cable, comes with a cable wrap. No memory wire, again, just a, a plastic thing, sort of pre-bent. Okay, so we have this little pleather pouch. Inside we have a little cable clip, which I love, cable clips. And then a whole sheet of alternate buds, wow. We've got six alternate pairs. Okay, so fit in the ear, uh, just just fine, I would say. I'm able to get in there pretty well. Um, feels like it's poking out about as much as maybe the C10s. Um, the body is definitely thicker uh, here than the ZS10 Pros. The weight's not an issue, it's just the shape uh, that I'm, I'm really having to, to make sure it, it's seated in there well. Okay, so these T2Gs were really a big surprise for me because I would say I've gotten the best bass response from these out of any model that we've talked about so far. Uh, really surprisingly, I say that these hold up entirely and stand right alongside the five uh, driver models, the ZS10 Pro and the C10s. Um, and in some areas, I think these actually sound better. Like I said, the bass extension and clarity and power is really surprisingly good here. Um, but even across the whole frequency spectrum, the signal felt uh, accurately represented to me without lots of hype, without any big frequency uh, jumps or dips. It's definitely not V-shaped. It's just straight all the way across. 
This feels really clear, feels very, very present, directly in your face, and super wide across the stereo uh, field. So now, uh, who are these a good fit for? I would say for bassists and drummers, these are great. For audiophiles who just want to listen to music, uh, I actually think this might be my go-to compared to the ZS10 Pros or the C10s because they're just really clear. The fidelity felt super high. Snare drums felt punchy. Synths felt bright and powerful without getting brittle or grainy in the high end. Cymbals sounded really great uh, on Starlight by Bethel. And the strings in What a Beautiful Name and the piano textures were really clear. Okay, so now we're at the higher end of the budget tier here for talking about budget in-ear monitors. We've got four models left. The first three fall under $100, and then the last one's sort of an outlier at the most expensive in the bunch, but because it's a KZ option, uh, the most premium option they have, it felt like it was worth including. That's the KZ AS16. This comes in at $136. So let's dive right in. The first option are the KZ AS12s. Now these are AS12 because there's six balance armatures in each ear. No dynamic drivers in this model, which is interesting. So when you reach a certain level of KZ, then they start giving you this black box instead of the white one, all the others we've opened so far. So opens up like this, a little bit more premium packaging. Okay, so uh, same story here, plastic, resin, 3D print body with a metal faceplate. In the box, even though the box is fancier, it's the same stuff. We've got two different alternate tips, little instruction thing, and then we've got our cable. It might be the same exact cable that comes in the ZS10 Pros. Interestingly enough, as we go up in quality, then these, uh, the canal part here uh, changes a little bit as well. This, for example, has a little bit of a metal finish there. Okay, so now these feel like the KZ headphones that I bought a few years ago, where they're like almost entirely not making contact with my inner ear. Bigger than the ZS10s, bigger than the, the T2Gs, bigger than the C10s. Here we have uh, the AS12s. So if, again, four and a half stars on Amazon, six balanced armatures per ear. Um, let's listen to some music. In terms of sound quality, you can definitely tell there's no dynamic driver in here because the bass is not uh, nearly as present uh, in terms of power and energy, especially the sub bass versus some of these options we've talked about uh, over the last couple models that do have a dynamic driver. Uh, I think these could be a really good fit for uh, the musician who doesn't need lots of low end, who doesn't need lots of high end. So maybe if you're a vocalist yourself, these could work really well for you because you're gonna be able to focus in with clarity on the mid-range. And I think that's really where these uh, do the best. I don't know that they do that much better to merit the difference in price between some of the mid-tier options we've already talked about. And these are probably the least comfortable to wear out of all the options we've talked about so far. Um, and I do think that comfort is almost as much a part of the discussion with these universal budget models as sound quality, at least to some certain extent, because if you hate having them in your ear, it really doesn't matter how good they sound. Uh, but the sound quality is good, uh, the representation is good, mid-range I think sounds nice and tight, so I think that's where these do the best. We are now getting into some of the name brand options here. These are the old reliable Shure 215s. These are industry standard, church standard, buy these for your worship band and keep them around and let people swap out buds. So I'm really curious to see how these stack up against the options we've already talked about. Uh, I bought this set on Amazon for $89. There is a single dynamic driver in here. There is a detachable but proprietary cable. Uh, but the, the 215s have uh, a long proven track record of reliability. And the form factor and the wearability is really nice. So let's get in here and talk about these. Uh, okay, lots of sure goodies in here. So we've got several different tips. These are designed specifically for sure, and you get a little earwax plug cleaner thingy, which nobody talks about, but everybody needs. Most people. Okay, and then let's get in here. This is one thing I love about the 215s. I love the experience of wearing them because you get this really great, super solid 
memory wire in the cable. And then my favorite thing that people don't talk about enough is the swivel design uh, way that the cable connects to the in-ear itself. Uh, it's a simple thing, but the ergonomics of having that swivel uh, versus wearing in-ears where they don't, it's definitely something that you notice when it's not there. And then you've got uh, in here some more uh, tip options. I'm just going to go with the default tips. Now, this actually ships with foam tips on by default, which is great because, as I've said, big fan of foam tips. And then here we've got the classic Sure case, nice zip up case user manual in there. Okay, so uh, again, these are single dynamic drivers. So the third single dynamic driver set that we've done today. Cable is super long. You can tell that these, this is really designed for musicians. And in terms of fit, the 215s are awesome. Uh, they're so, so comfortable to wear. And I think that's a big part of why they're still in use because they just feel good to wear. They're really great for uh, volunteers who are not used to wearing in-ears, they're going to just be a natural fit. And they, once they're in, they stay in, they're really ergonomic. Um, and they've got that memory wire, which is just great. Yeah, so really comfortable, really, really uh, nestled in there. Well, I can tell they're not going anywhere and my ears don't feel any of the weight of the monitor because it's all in my ear canal and then supported by the memory wire. All right, let's listen to some music. Okay, so SE215s, let's get one thing straight. These are the most comfortable, universal, budget-friendly in-ear monitors of the whole batch, at least so far. These feel really good in your ear. You can forget that they're there pretty much. There's no weight, there's no hang outside of the ear canal. With the memory wire, with a foam tip, with the swivel, these just feel really, really good. With that out of the way, how do they sound? Well. I think they sound somewhere in between the M6 Pro and the T2Gs from TFZ. These do not match them. I just went back and AB compared them, and these sound really focused and a little bit narrow. Now there's lots of clarity in the 215s, but there's not incredibly powerful bass, and the stereo image feels a little bit constrained to me. Um, the high end is also, to me, lacking some energy. But it feels to me like it drops off in the high end in terms of presence, and it definitely doesn't have the low end punch that the T2Gs do. So if, if I could get the ergonomics of these with the sound quality of the T2Gs, that would be an ideal single dynamic driver for me. But I will say the T2Gs feel plenty good. Not as good as these, they're not as ergonomic, but they're not overly bulky. But we have one more single dynamic driver model to talk about. This is the Sennheiser IE40 Pro in-ear monitor. Very similar aesthetically and in terms of track record and history uh, to the 215. So let's get in here and open these up. Now, today these are $99.95. It's a 10 millimeter dynamic driver. Inside, a whole lot of nothing. It's a giant block of foam. It's a giant block of foam. Here we've got a pouch. The whole package could have been this size. Very similar to the 215s. We've got several different sizes of buds uh, and something to clean them with. And this pouch does have little snapback elastic thing to seal things up and then that's that's it manual silica gel all right so this guy uh just like the 215 is a solid rubber plastic cable not quite as long as the 215 but still plenty long um, and then coming up to the ear we have very much like the 215 a similar swivel design so the cable juncture is a swivel which is great and then we do have memory wire hidden underneath this plastic. And then this guy has an adjustable slider here on the back, which I also really care for. Okay, let's put these in, see how they feel. These are very lightweight. More of this is making contact with my ear than the 215s, sort of in a pleasant way. It feels like a good seal as I'm talking and moving my mouth around. Let's hear how they sound. Okay, so after listening through a few songs, these are exceedingly comfortable, very similar in terms of ergonomics to the 215. Uh, I think I like these a little bit more in terms of feel. There's sort of a matte or rubbery finish to the in-ear itself, which feels nice in the ear. 
In terms of sound quality, we're working with a single 10 millimeter dynamic driver here, and you can tell. Uh, the bass is not incredibly powerful. Uh, it's a nice balanced response across the frequency spectrum, but I wouldn't describe it as uh, very powerful. I would say on par with the SE215s. If you're trying to resource your worship team for a long time, maybe just sets of backups for folks that forget their monitors at home or something, if you need them to last forever, the 215s and these IE40 Pros from Sennheiser both are gonna be really great options that I think you'll get a long life out of, but I'm really enjoying the sound quality of the T2Gs much more than any of the other single dynamic driver options that we've talked about so far. Anyways, we have one left, can you believe it? This is in-ear monitor set number 11. These are the KZAS 16s. Now, this is the outlier in the whole video because we talk about under $100 in the video title, but these actually right now clock in at 136 bucks. It's the most expensive in-ear that KZ has ever put out and I had to buy them to see if they are worth the price tag because this is over double the price of the ZS10 Pros. So here you have with the AS16, eight balanced armatures across the frequency spectrum, which is unique to the KZ line. This is the only eight driver model that they have. There's really nothing wildly innovative about these from an aesthetic or functional or ergonomic standpoint. These are standard issue KZ headphones you've got. The more expensive looking silver faceplate in the box. Same old body here. And the same stuff as every other KZ that we've opened today. Two separate sets of buds. So here we are finally hitting uh, a reliable cable style that is across different models here. Okay, so just picking this up, same plastic resin 3D print um, metal here on the tip. And then we've got this metal faceplate. These are, I would say, quite heavy compared to some of the other options we've talked about, like the ZS10 Pro or the C10. They don't feel that much heavier to me than the, uh, the AS12s, um, but a little bit. Uh, we'll see how it feels in the ear. No memory wire, just this port sort of shaped plastic. All right, so in the ear, this feels more like on the ear, to be honest. Uh, these are big, these feel big. I, I would imagine some foam tips would help. Um, okay, let's check them out. Okay, so AS16s, where to start? I really wanna like these, I do. Um, I wanna like the ones <laughs> that are the most expensive. I wanna like the, the in-ears with the most drivers. I wanna like the newest in-ears. I'm not sure that I do, and I, I don't, I, it's, it's hard to say exactly why, because they sound good. They sound probably the widest in terms of separation and quality, but with that being said, I, I just don't feel like it's quite as cohesive as some of the other options we've talked about. I keep coming back, I keep coming back to the T2Gs. Um, going back and forth between these and the ZS10 Pros, these sound better than the ZS10 Pros, but do they sound over double the price better and a huge sacrifice in my opinion in terms of ergonomics because these are so much less comfortable to wear? No, I don't think so. I don't think these are twice as good <laughs> as the ZS10 Pros in terms of sound quality. There's more width, there's more clarity in the high end here, uh, but overall I think you get a good enough amount of power, maybe even close to the same amount of power uh, for reference monitoring than uh, with the ZS10 Pros. Comparing these to the T2Gs, uh, you get, I think, a wider sense of stereo image here, uh, and you get maybe some more clarity to be, to be able to pick out specific nuances in the mix, but the whole listening experience to me feels more broken up, less cohesive, and I actually wonder if that has to do with these eight balanced armatures having some issues with phasing at the points where the signal crossfades. You've got four balanced armatures handing, handling the high end, two in the mids, two in the bass. It just feels like I'm hearing a lot of sound, but it's not necessarily quite as pleasing to me. Okay guys, so I'm back after a couple of days of letting my favorite models of in-ears burn in, so just letting lots of audio run through them for an extended period of time. 
I went back and listened to my top three from the whole list of 11. So as a refresher, those were the KZ ZS10 Pros, the KZ AS16s, and the TFZ T2Gs. Now, before I get into reevaluating these final three and talking about what I noticed after letting them wear in for a while, I wanna give an honorable mention to the KZ ZSTs. I did go back and listen to these alongside these top three, and the KZ ZSTs are under $20, one of the in-ear monitors that really started this whole craze of budget in-ears several years back. If you're on a super tight budget, out of the three ultra budget in-ears that we reviewed, I think I'd go for the ZSTs. Okay, now let's talk about the final three. Let's start at the top with the KZAS 16s Coming back to these after burn-in, I didn't really notice anything glaringly different from my initial listen. They're still pretty flat, pretty balanced, really wide soundstage, but I still noticed the same sort of lack of energy that I felt when I initially tried these on. Um, I don't think for me at that price point, um, over double the cost of some of the more expensive KZ options that they necessarily merit in terms of sound quality, that extra expense. The second thing that I think really is to the detriment of the AS16s is just the ergonomics. Because there's so many drivers, the shell of these in-ears is the biggest of any that we reviewed. They really didn't fit in my ear very well, and I think that that is something that's worth considering, that's worth mentioning. Um, especially over longer listening experiences, I think that these would get uncomfortable to wear. So I don't think that the AS16s are the top of the list for me. I'd probably put them in third place. So then that leaves us with the KZ ZS10 Pros and the TFZ T2Gs. Now, I was really surprised that the T2Gs were even in my top three. With the single dynamic driver, I really wasn't expecting that much from this model. But the crazy thing is they sound so smooth, so nice. It's a gentle V-shape with a great amount of bass, really nice sub bass, and detailed treble response without a bunch of harshness or sibilance. The mid-range is scooped a little bit, but to me, that just makes these a really enjoyable, sort of energetic, hyped up uh, set of in-ears to listen to. To contrast that with the ZS10 Pros, the ZS10 Pros also have a single dynamic driver powering the bass. So the bass response is nice. I would say that these are a little bit more flat and smooth uh, across the frequency spectrum than the T2Gs. In terms of ergonomics, I think they're very similar because there's that single dynamic driver in the T2Gs, I felt they were maybe a little bit more comfortable to wear over time, but the size and the shape of the shell and body between the two is really, really similar. So for me, the T2G set gets first place out of these 11 models of in-ears. And I'm not just talking about for casual listening. If you're looking for in-ear monitors for church, I really think the T2Gs are strongly worth considering. I think the ZS10 Pros are another great choice. And then I'd put the AS16s in third place because of the extra weight and because of the added price point that I don't think merits the sound quality that you're getting. Okay, folks, so those are my top three, but it's super subjective and we'd love to hear from you in the comments if you have experience with any of these 11 models or if there's a model of in-ear that you love that you think we missed out on reviewing in this video. So let us know in the comments. If you'd like to check out any of the models we've reviewed today, there's a link in the description of the video to all 11 models. If you happen to purchase a set through one of those links, we get a small kickback from Amazon. So thank you for supporting us in that way. I do wanna talk about accessories really quickly. First off, foam tips I've mentioned offhand a couple times during the video. Uh, the only model that came with foam tips out of the box was the uh, SE215s. I'm a big fan of foam tips. Uh, you press it down, compact it, put it into your ear and the foam expands, which gives you a really nice seal. And I think uh, an extra level of comfort compared to silicone tips. Uh, Comply is the leading brand in foam tips and Comply makes a variety of sizes. So everything that we've talked about in this video, every model we've talked about, you're gonna be able to get Comply tips to match. So I really strongly recommend whatever in-ear model you settle on, end up trying out some Comply tips. So we'll link those in the description and you're gonna to wanna to check whichever specific model you get. Uh, check Comply's website to see uh, what um, 
model of their tips go with the specific headphones that you have. Okay, and then two different cases here that we picked up. This first one is from a company called GL Con. Uh, this is $5.99. This has a little mesh area here where you can keep extra tips and stuff, which is really nice. Similar to the, the, the case that you can get with, with Shure in-ears. There's no clip, which is my favorite thing about the 215's uh, included case, but you do have two zippers. And then there is a little loop here, so you could attach it to your, uh, to your key ring or do a put a carabiner on there or whatever. And then this is uh, the option uh, directly from KZ. This is $9.30 on Amazon. So in here, very basic. There's no uh, mesh pouch or anything. Just wrap your headphones up and toss them in there. I would get this guy. 